And, and in our culture, you'll see situations. We've seen it in the papers in recent days where, where some people just got way ahead of themselves. This whole Madoff situation. Somebody sort of became a little bit of a god. And, and it got to be a mess. And a lot of people are getting hurt because of that. We are not God. There, Isaiah pointed out as something of his core passage, a, a verse or two that's a little bit before the verses that we read a few moments ago. But the heart of Isaiah's message, I'm talking about the whole 66 chapters, I think it's 66 chapters in Isaiah. The core message is the grass withers and the flower fades. And we're just like them. Only the word of our God stands forever. That's the heart of the whole message of Isaiah. is calling people back to this basic understanding that we sin and fall short of the glory. That we're not quite there. That God looks all over the earth looking for just one good one and he can't find it. It's the nature of who we are and it creates this amazing cooperative dependency where we depend upon God to be God. Recognizing that we are not he talked about how in verse 15 about even the nations, are they're just dust. They're nothing next to God. Even the youth, when they, they get tired, they, they kind of lose their power. But then it goes on and it gets a little better. There's a little passage in Psalms, in Psalm 90, verse 12. It says, teach us, O Lord, to number our days. Just before that, he said, you know, most of us get, you know, three score years, 60, uh, maybe four score if you're lucky. You, you get 70 to 80 years, and, and that's about it. But, and he says, Lord, re help us to recognize we're mortal, that we're responsible for these years and the way we spend them, the minutes, the words, the talents, the resources. We're responsible to you. Teach us that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And it changes the way that we live our lives. So you got two grounding statements. Two grounding statements. God's God and we're not. And then let's say you have one flight plan. That'll be that last little piece. One, one plan of action that's going to help you make that eagle rank as far as our life goes. Isaiah 40, chapter 28 through 31. I'll, I'll read that little piece for you just to refresh your memory. Isaiah 40. Uh, 28, have you not known, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Got a problem you can't solve? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. You're feeling a little, a little weary, about a quart low in your life. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases their strength. Wow, zero, no might, and he increases. It takes zero up to something that was not there before. Even the young people shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The flight plan is to wait on God. Now, that's in contrast, wait on God, and then you go over to Genesis chapter 12, and here's the beginnings of faith as we know it, the beginnings of faith community when God calls Abram. And you may recall the way that it read, the quote from Scripture, go, this is the first word of it. Wait a second, I thought you said wait, go to a land I will show you. Go to a, a land I will show you. There's a, a tension in this whole spirit life, this whole trusting God as our sufficiency. And it's this tension between waiting and, and going. Well, waiting and doing. Uh, the word faith without works is dead comes from James. It, it's no such thing. It's God created us with grace but he did it as his workmanship in Christ Jesus for, for good works that we might be able to walk in them. And so here's that tension between the, the waiting and the going. Uh, it, it's called active waiting, I guess you could say. That would fill in the blank for you if you've been using your little study sheet. Active waiting. It, it's like a running back. 
who's waiting on the blocks to take place in front of him so that the hole opens up. Have you ever seen, uh, and you'll hear it periodically, where they'll talk about a running back while well, he outran his blockers. But, but see, the, the great running backs, they know, and you can see them. It's like they, they let off on the accelerator just a little bit until that hole opens up, and then they hit the hole when it's time. It, it's they're waiting, anticipating an action of God, anticipating they're waiting for the next command. They're not just sitting out, uh, clicking the remote control. They're, they're waiting for the next command, waiting in an active sort of way. It's like a, a person who bakes bread. you got to wait for that be- bread, that dough to rise a little bit before you can put it in the oven. If you don't wait on it, then it comes out flat. It doesn't work. And so there's a timing. It's that balance between waiting and going, waiting and doing. It, it, this is a story I've shared with our congregation before, but I thought our Boy Scouts might get a little bit of a kick out of it. It's a story about the fly in the old country store. And in the old country store, you know how they used to have, they'd have big barrels of, uh, of uh, crackers, and that's where they'd have cracker barrel is where it came from. They'd literally take the lid off, and there'd be crackers inside. And then there are these big hoops, big round kind of cylinders of cheese, and they'd just cut a slice off. And, and sometimes they would have it covered under glass, and sometimes they wouldn't. And, and then you can imagine in a country store without air conditioning, you got salamis and bolognese and all these different meats, turkeys and things, and, and not really kept up quite the way we would be used to as far as the, the sanitary hygiene areas would be, but here's the fly, and he's kind of flying around in the country store, and he's thinking, well, I'd kind of like a little something to eat, and so the fly flies around and and goes over, I think I'd like a little bit of cheese, and it has a little bit of cheese, and and, uh, just, no, it's not quite what I'm hungry for, and so then it flies over to where there's some sliced turkey, and and it begins nibbling a little bit on the turkey, and and, no, it's not really what I'm hungry for, but then it looks over, and there's that nice big roll of bologna that they can cut off in as thick a slices as you like and, and it's got the knife sticking in there and he goes over and he begins eating the bologna oh and it's so wonderful and fresh and, and delicious and he eats and eats and eats and then he begins to realize well I guess I guess I better begin to make my way back home I'm getting sleepy already and so he decides well the way I'll get a good launch is I'll go up and I'll, I'll climb up the uh, the knife and so it climbs up the knife and climbs up get just right to the top of the knife handle and then it begins to fly and it just pff, splat splat and the moral of the story is don't fly off the handle when you're full of baloney uh, and, 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 and that's it in the spiritual life don't fly off the handle go to Jerusalem and wait until you're seen powerful on high God wants to impart wisdom to those who don't have wisdom he wants to give you strength when you have no strength. A little passage I would read from my favorite devotional book, God Calling. It was just, it's today's reading. I always read a day or two ahead just in case there's something waiting on you, but would you hear this word from God Calling? And I'm actually going to close from the piano here in just a moment. And so I want you, if you would, to bow your heads. I'm going to read something to you, sing something to you. And if you would, listen with me. Christ speaking. I am your Lord, your supply. You must rely on me. Trust to the last uttermost limit. Trust and be not afraid. You must depend on divine power only. I have not forgotten you. Your help is coming. You shall know and realize my power. Endurance is faith tried almost to the breaking point. You must wait and trust and hope and joy in me. You must not depend on man, but on me, your strength, your strength, your your help, your supply. This is the great test. Am I your supply or not? Every great work for me has had to have this great test time. Possess your souls in patience and rejoice. You must wait until I show you the way. Heaven itself cannot contain more joy. That soul knows. When after the waiting test, I crown it victor. But no discipline or no disciple of mine can be victor who does not wait until I give the order to start. You cannot be anxious if you know that I am your supply.